in the beginning, or just after the beginning, there were costumes. The Greeks didn't want theater on roller skates with falling chandeliers, but they did like to dress up. Welcome to Women in Theater. I'm Linda Weiner, theater critic and arts columnist of Newsday. And our guest today is Willa Kim, who for nearly a half century has been designing clothes that make actors feel like dancing. Welcome, I'm so glad you're here. Well, I'm delighted to be here. Yeah. Mainly, besides being happy to see you, I think that the entire idea of costumes in the theater is a very mysterious subject to most people because we all get dressed in the morning, we think we know about clothes, but we really don't know what goes into to dressing these people who can move around the stage like, like uh, the wizards. So tell me first, did there, you do regular plays, you have costumes for mm -hmm. regular plays, uh -huh. also for musicals, and also for the dance. Right. Is there a big difference? Oh, absolutely. And also for opera. I oh, have no. done a few operas, too. Oh, they, they don't move much, right? No, that's, that's <laughs> wonderful to do. <laughs> dress they up. stand. They right. stand. They're like a piece of scenery. Uh -huh. And they're happy. They just focus on the conductor. <laughs> But would you, you do a lot of dance? A lot I of, do yeah. do a lot of dance. It, How do you get these costumes so, to fit people so that when they move, the costumes look like their skin? Well, I think most of it happened to, for me in the late 60s. Uh, Betty Williams showed me a new fabric she had a shop, and she was doing a ballet of mine. And uh, I thought it was wonderful. It was lycra. And it had never been used in on the New York stage. Oh, we, we have you to thank for Lycra, is that yeah, it? Yeah. Uh -huh. And so when I did my first ballet, it was for Marco Saffington, a ballet called We Wiz we for the Joffrey. Of course, I know We Wiz, uh -huh. yes. And uh, Robert Joffrey was just, he said, I'm electrified. What is that fabric? And how did they get into those clothes? And Capizos was there as well, and they said, there aren't any zippers and there aren't any openings. They hadn't seen, hadn't used this fabric, if you can believe it. And I want you, this on record. I want the whole world to know, know this that is the I, one who, This I is the one who did it. Great. And you paint on it, though. So. Yes, I do. Uh -huh. Now, one, that, costume by costume, brush right, by brush? Absolutely. And we do all the marks of the dancers, so that each costume for each dancer is individual. If they have a slight stomach or, a, you know, we can minimize that by paint. Now, and they're thrilled with this. And, you, do and you, you know, they don't know they're perfect. They think they're imperfect. You can't believe them. Well, that's, but, I always think you must be a, like a therapist or something, because oh yeah, everyone like, is <laughs> self-conscious about their looks, but actors and dancers uh, their livelihood is dependent on it, not just their egos. So uh, how do you they, build their they, confidence? They look at themselves in the mirror, and I swear, by millimeter, they know something is wrong. And and I, I don't see it, because I look at them and I think, my God, aren't they beautiful? Because it, their bodies are beautiful. You can't be a dancer and not be beautiful. I mean, their whole bodies are built on the exercises that make them beautiful. What about the actors who aren't beautiful and they think they are and they come with their own costumes? I don't think I've ever had that happen. I, I've heard of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, opera, opera singers do that because they come in so late for a rehearsal. They just bring, the they just bring their own, you know, whatever it is that they, wear, they want to wear. And I think that's destructive to a production. Oh, it is, when, it, really? when it's been planned so carefully by the designer and, you know, Harsh in their throat. <laughs> I'd love you to take us through the process from the call from Tommy Toon. Oh, yes, that's lovely. <laughs> the call from Tommy Toon to the opening of Will Rogers Follies, oh, which in fact oh. was one of the shows that, that for which you got uh -huh. a Tony Award, and that yeah. was uh -huh. 1991, and you also right. got uh -huh. a Tony in 1980. 81 for sophisticated ladies, right? right? Uh -huh. yeah. In addition to many, many, many other awards, uh -huh. including an Emmy. Uh, but first of all, before we get to whatever this is sitting here on our table, which is enticing, I'd like to know 
how much power you have in relationship to the director. Where, does the director call you up and say, this is what I want it to look like? Or it depends on the director. Some of them, um, uh, well, Tommy is the most wonderful director to work with. I would think so. Because he knows theater, he knows dance, and he has a strong visual sense, so that he comes with the production planned in his mind. And um, it's wonderful. But does that make it less creative for you? No, no. I mean, just to say, you know, I want three ruffles here and, yeah. and two pleats down here. But he has concept. He has the concept. And what about and the set clear. designer? How much do you work with a set designer? Well, I have to work with a set designer. And is there general the conflict? agreement? No, no, no. There yeah. shouldn't be. I mean, after all, um, it's going to be one stage. Yeah. And you want it to look related. Yes. You don't want the costumes to suddenly come out of left field and, and conflict and, with the... And what about lights? I would think lights could be a really oh, tricky with, with costumes if you work that hard to get just the right oh, color. Geez. And everyone could hear me screaming all the way from here, too. <laughs> <laughs> How do I guess that? Everyone thinks she's a quiet woman. No screaming about the lights. No. Oh, gosh, you know, when you think of what you go through to pick out colors, you know, for a show. Yeah. First of all, what is this called? This is the Bible. This is the Bible, and we don't know why this is called the Bible, we except we believe not. it. We, we don't have question to it. believe it. Okay. This is the Bible, and what's in the Bible is the truth. <laughs> I mean, uh, if you want to question any, uh, once, once the show is open and anyone has has to replace something, they have to go to the Bible. And that's where you get all your information. And this has shoes section and every costume that's in the show? Every costume. How many Bibles? And as a rule, yeah. well, uh, there will, for a musical, there sure. may be four or five yes. Bibles. This, and this is just, this is just shoes. This is just Four. shoes. This yeah. is will. This is actually. This is Victor Victoria. Victor Victoria. Victor Victoria. Shoes. That's these just are, shoes. These are just shoes Fabulous. for the company, so that there is a photograph. There are details. There's research. This is the research from the period. Um, do you do a lot of the research yourself? I, I do. Yeah. At the very beginning. Mm -hmm. But so many things develop too. I mean, this was originally designed with just a pair of Oxfords. This is yes. this is the Julie Andrews opening from, from yeah. Victor uh -huh. Victoria. When she's and and soaked and cold and, and, and so miserable. these are her wet shoes. Yeah, these mm -hmm. are her wet shoes, mm -hmm. and she's looking like a, like a mouse, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, doesn't last. Then she right? thought that she thought that it might be nice if she had galoshes, which is very typical of the period too. So then I did that little drawing of galoshes. We looked at galoshes research, and we had them built. We had them made. Uh, we and can't go out and buy them anymore. You know, they don't <laughs> exist. Do, um, do a lot of actors make suggestions like that, or, or do they just come in for the fitting and say, thank you for making me beautiful? I don't think many actors make suggestions. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, they're hoping yeah. that... Uh, of course, she was also a producer on the show, wasn't she? Or her, her husband, her husband, husband was the was director. Her husband was director and, so, and producer. So yeah. Oh, no, but Julie yeah. is so, and she's a wonderful, wonderful what I think performer is, as well as a woman. You know, she's, what's boggling to me, and this show in particular is, is particularly extreme in this, but I'm fascinated by cast changes, that mm -hmm. you've designed an entire wardrobe, an entire show for Julie Andrews, and in comes Raquel Welch, and, Liza, and later Liza Minnelli, to pretend to be a woman, to be a, a woman who dresses up as a man and then pretends to be a woman. Is that it? Oh, it's been a while. Me. Now, what do, you, do you have to adjust the designs I a lot you for do. the yes, individuals? Yes, I do. Uh -huh. yeah. I mean, because they have such different figures. Right. Raquel I mean, Welch is, is legendary is a, for certain abundance. things. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, she doesn't want to minimize any of these. Um, and um, Liza's so tiny. I mean, she really is tiny. 
And so every time someone else yes, comes uh, in, then they call you and you start all over again. I, I do. Mm -hmm. With all the problems. The problems. <laughs> <laughs> Now with the process. Okay, Tommy Toon calls you, uh -huh. and and he explains to you that he wants to do this show about Will Rogers, and that it's also going to be have a lot of, of leg, girly leg. It's going to be a, a mm -hmm. kind of a tired businessman show. Right. Uh -huh. um, and it is the follies. It is the follies. Glorifying the American woman. There was the American beauty. There was quite a bit of controversy oh, yeah. around the time of that show. I think I might have led some of it. Oh, but, no. <laughs> right, so, but about, about the costumes, uh, not so much, I think, not so much the actual costumes, because I think they were exquisite, but the way that particularly the women in the, in the, the cast were portrayed on those big on billboards. Those billboards. It was yes, the billboards were, uh -huh, that set everyone uh -huh, off, The I petty think. drawings. The petty drawings, because uh -huh. there was the, you know, it had Will Rogers stamped on the butts and um, women hogtied and stuff. <laughs> I don't know why I would have been upset, but I was younger then, right? Yes. But did people, were, were any of you expecting anyone to be annoyed by it? No. It was, so no. it was complete shock. Uh, I actually found I that I no was shocked that I was annoyed by it. You uh -huh. know, I didn't expect myself to be. Yes. And I know that they kept calling people on the staff about it and, um, Everyone disappeared from their phones and wouldn't return calls. <laughs> it, was, it was quite a scandal at the time. I well, mean. and the show won a Tony, and the drama critic yeah. circle, and you won a Tony, and you, you see the power of the press, right? Yeah. <laughs> right. But when um, you get this call, then you meet with the director. Do you also meet with the, all the designers at once and discuss the entire concept? It depends. Uh, in this particular case, um, Tommy called and said, um, I think he called in November and said, we're going to do a show, we're going to open it January or February. I can't remember. And I said, you can't do it. it it's impossible. You can't do it. And then he called um, Tony Walton. Tony Walton said, it can't be done. Tony Walton, the set designer. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. And uh, he said, there isn't enough time for preparation and you know, to do the actual designing. And Tony was out in Hollywood doing a movie at the time. I don't remember which one. But um, Tommy said, uh, no, we're going to do it. Isn't that part of the fun of the theater? The lore is always that there isn't enough time <laughs> and not enough money. No, but in right? this case, it's November. Wow. We can open it. You know. You, yes, yeah, that's you, ridiculous. Yes. So we all trundled out to Hollywood because Tony could not come for meetings, and so we went out there for meetings. We sat around the pool and okay. uh, had our meetings. I think I taped some of the meetings. I thought that this has got to be historic in some way. <laughs> now, these, these... No, and then so we yeah. have meetings, and then we... So we did it. You know. And how, how but many things... But we didn't open you... in, in January or February. To I thought Tommy Toon likes to open the last day before well, the Tony we, cut we off, right? almost, uh, We his, almost did that. That's uh -huh. part of his yeah, lucky uh -huh. charm to open yeah. the last day. And we actually previewed in town instead of uh, uh -huh. going out of town. Now, you're famous for having lots and lots of fittings yes. on each person yes. to get it just so. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would think the actors would love that. I would think that they would welcome it. Yeah, Am I, I wrong? don't think they mind. I think the director and the choreographer mind much more <laughs> because we're I'm t eating into their t time. But uh, no, they, they they like the fact that uh, I'm trying to achieve a certain amount of excellence. <laughs> that's how. That's because you're you. <laughs> that's why they called you, right? Uh, so well, I don't know about that. What about? These fabrics, these costumes, have to last eight performances a week, they have and to be there's may, they uh -huh. have to be washed. How, do they, you wash out after every performance? How often do you most, wash them? Most most dance clothes are washed uh -huh. after each performance, and, and they're dry. And so they have to be very resilient in addition yes, to everything do. else. Yes, I mean that's one thing about theater costumes. There, you can, very often cannot use clothes off the rack because they don't can't take the wear. And uh, these costumes are constructed to last a year. 
that can't be. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And it's true. And when you began the first off-Broadway show that you ever did, after you moved here from Los Angeles, and you were living in New York in the 60s, uh -huh. and someone called and asked you to do the costumes for a show, and they gave you two hundred fifty dollars for yeah. a costume uh -huh. budget, we and you made 50 you made fifty costumes uh -huh. from this. Yeah. Now, did you do a lot of thrift shop shopping then? Uh, or? We did. Yeah. We did that, and we found clothes and um, made a few things uh, and shortcuts and we did a lot of the work ourselves you know that was did you really sleep did you really sleep in the theater yeah i did <laughs> <laughs> I barbara to harris's that. dressing room wow and so from there the difference between a 250 fifty dollar budget for costumes now a million dollars isn't is anything. A, mil a million now. dollars is is just accepted, right? Right. Uh -huh. And often That's it would be more than the Will that. Rogers call. That Will Rogers, and that was already ten, eleven years ago. Yeah. So it and, must be uh, quite a bit more than and that. And I now. didn't ask for it. I, uh, Marvin Krauss, who was our general manager, said, "This is your budget," and I went, "Oh my God!" <laughs> you know, I <laughs> love it. How wonderful. Yes, I said, <laughs> thank you. And you, it just barely covered what we had to do. Now, when you were little Willa, <laughs> you wanted to be a social worker or something. Did you? Is this oh. true? You thought you were going to do something good. Do good for the world, right? Oh, yeah. Now you're just doing I, good by I, making people look a, good. You know, I was quite a radical. I mean, uh -huh. it wasn't. Just, you know, I thought I could head a union, if you can imagine. I can imagine. I just said in the middle, I can the imagine. delusions. And, what, were uh, your family in the arts, or? No, no, no. My mother had a grocery store. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. And this was in L.A.? L.A., yes. And yeah. so how did you go from the grocery store to? I, I guess our public education system, you know. I was always encouraged to be an artist. and in grammar school, in high school, and uh, in college. And, and this, was, this was what I was supposed to do. And did you do a lot of dress up? <laughs> well, did that you, was... Was it not a clothing thing? It was no, a painter. no, it was painting. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. No, I've always loved clothes. I mean, it's, that's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so when I fell into designing, it, it was an kind of a natural extension of my work as, a, as an artist. And did you know Karinska in L.A.? Yes, I did. In, I did. in L.A. Uh -huh. or when you moved here? No, in L.A. In L.A. Yeah. She, a mentor, right? Yeah, she um, was. Whether she knows it or not, <laughs> she was my, one of my mentors. Um, could you tell me what you might have learned from her? This is, this is what's her oh first name? God. Barbara. Everyone just Barbara called Karenska. Karenska, yeah, uh -huh. a Russian designer, worked in, with the Ballet Russe and came to this country and it then, of course, with did ba with worked with Balanchine and, uh -huh. for probably 15, 20 years, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so what do you think you learned from Karinska? I, I, was, I wasn't her assistant. I was just kind of a gopher. I had been hired by Paramount and I was sitting there thinking, I was miserable. I thought, what am I doing in this factory, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and then I saw Raoul's work, Raoul, Raoul Pen Du Bois, yes. uh, who was designing the, the movie. Do you and remember Karinska what movie it was? was? Yes, it was Lady in the Dark. Oh, great. And uh, Karinska was, was brought in from New York to execute Raoul's costumes, and she had we uh, Paramount has a one, had a, a wonderful costume department and fabrics and you know I mean it was wonderfully set up. That must have been fun. And um, she saw me sit hanging around and uh, asked me to do some color samples for her and I said sure. Color I, samples I didn't know meaning. who she was. You know I, she showed me Raoul's sketches and said now make me some color samples from these sketches and so I did that and gave them to her, and then she decided that I could be useful. <laughs> she said, you know, to the head of the department, you know, this girl understands color. Can I take her? And he said, yes. So that's how I ended up under her wing. And, Lucky uh, brag. 
<laughs> could have been you know, a worse, if I, it's a good if I had wanted to be a designer, yeah. I couldn't have asked for a better Absolutely. introduction. I Absolutely. mean, Barbara Kerensky and Raoul Pendebois yeah. yeah. were the two most at the top of their field. Yeah. And to just have stumbled over them and have them yeah. stumble over you, what a wonderful yeah. thing. Yeah, uh-huh. And so, um, I mean, she had me drawing, uh, doing full-scale drawings, life-size drawings of Rell's sketches, so that all the details mm. on these dream sequences would be exactly right. I mean, these branches that came out of the, you know, and, and whatever was on the costume sketches. So I did all of that, and she would send me out to the metal shop to get them made, the frames made in, in proportion, do all the embroidery, beading samples, and uh, so it was, it was a, an amazing introduction to, to uh, How long costumes. Did it last? Well, the duration of that movie. Uh -huh. And so what brought you to New York? Well, eventually, I, my friend Tom Keogh came to New York to, to work with Kerenska. She brought him to New York. And because um, Tom and I went to school, and Kerenska, I showed Kerenska Tom's sketches, and he did these beautiful drawings. And uh, she took him when she went to MGM, took him and introduced him to um, Irene. Sheriff. Uh huh. No, not Sheriff. Well, no, but Irene Sheriff was yeah. there, but the other Irene. And um, so the next thing I know, Tom is working there with Karinska at MGM. And then he comes to New York to work with Karinska. And then I thought, he said, oh, it's wonderful. You've got to come. And so I did. What a wonderful time. Yeah, uh, did, you, did you get to know Balanchine? Yes, I met him, but I met Balanchine in. Um, Hollywood. He was out there doing a movie. So oh, you we got, were all oh, you guys in Hollywood. It's great. And we were. Yeah. And Karinska what a had this had this house in Malibu. I mean, she had a house up in the hills of, of Hollywood, but she had this house in Malibu, and so we would all be there. I mean, Balanchine was one of them, and oh, uh, uh, oh, so many uh, of the people, the Russians. The Russian expatriates would be. When I look back at those days, uh -huh. and Karinska was doing costumes, and the sets were by Chagall or Miro or Dolly, is that? Do you yearn for that? Uh, do you, Berard and yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you uh -huh. wish that there were great artists? Our great I artists do. were doing do. set design, yes. wouldn't that? Uh -huh. And Dolly was one of the people. So when I came to, to, um, in New York, I, we were working with these people. Yeah. Karenska was doing the costumes for um, the ballet. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but it was a but branch have, of a European yeah, ballet. We have wonderful set designers in America and in New York now, but we don't have the the you don't have major the major artists, artists. You don't have the artists being working interested as a in design, the theater, in the which theater, I think yeah. would, would change things for oh, you I, a little I bit. Oh, I adored that. Yeah. I adored that. I loved all those people that I met at Kerensky's. Um, I I also noted that noticed that this is a uh, women in theater, and and of all the the areas in the theater, costume design seems to be the most welcoming. There are more women doing costumes than there are set designers. That's true. Yes, I was thinking about that because it, uh, a discussion came up at TDF about... Uh, Theater Development Fund? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah uh -huh, about uh, women as set designers. And, and they're and really, there are very few. A few English yeah. women. But then costumes is clothing, I guess it's... Yeah, uh, uh -huh. I don't it's considered know a more female. Probably, probably. Lucky for yeah. us. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> How frustrating is it when, when you, um, when you work on a show, for example, uh, Busker Alley or Legs Diamond, which you worked on, and your yes, costumes uh, were so exquisite for, and you work and you do your Bibles and they're up to here and you have all your fittings, and the show do, the show oh, closes. So heartbreaking. It just must be crushing because you have no control over any of it. All you can do is the best you can do, mm -hmm. and the rest of the show is in other people's hands. So, 
Oh, it's heartbreaking. It must Lake's be. Diamond was heartbreaking, yeah. yeah, because so many of the people died in that too. You know, I just oh, I, whenever I think of it, uh, you know, yeah. I just where do the costumes go? Is there a dead is there a dead costume uh, warehouse? I think those costumes went up to. Um, I'm sure that they did. Oh. What is that theater that's way up in Connecticut? There's several. Oh, but whatever, they're being reused. Yes, they have so, a warehouse so where a lot of the shows have gone, thank God. And so don't people, they, 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 people use them and borrow them, and, and they're actors, kept intact. Do actors want to keep them? Well, sometimes they do. <laughs> It'd be I, hard to give up once you once yeah, you live in it. Yeah, kept her jacket out of song. Out of dance. song and dance, Brenda yeah. Peters. Yes, uh, uh -huh. she must have been fun to design for. Yes, uh huh. Um, she's tiny, you know, and uh, but it's amazing when she's on stage, she mm -hmm. dominates the stage. It's, isn't that a strange you know, thing? That she's so tiny, and it, you you never know it from seeing her on the stage. I remember Baryshnikov was, uh, not Baryshnikov, I'm sorry, Nureyev was a lot shorter than you would think. Baryshnikov already is short. But you say, I remember someone said to Nureyev once, I thought you were, uh, that you were taller than this. And he said, on the stage I am. It's true. <laughs> so, it's true. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I want to ask one question. The time is he going so quickly. He wasn't that short for, you know, well, he's a dancer. Not for a dancer, but no, uh -huh. he, the way he would take the stage. Oh, and then well, the he was, way, he's mean, very he... delicate, delicate oh, in yes. person. Uh -huh. Now, as a woman, if there were one thing that you could change right now about the theater, what would it be? I wish they would go into theater of the imagination. Uh, less literal theater. And yes, less realistic. And uh, But, you know, uh, obviously that's not a very commercial. No. For, for uh -huh. women or for men, this is not a very commercial, I'm no. afraid. Uh -huh. Anyway, Willa Kim, I'm so happy that you were here. I wish we had another, another half hour <laughs> or more. But thank you so much for coming. And thank you for joining us. On behalf of the League of Professional Theater Women, I'm Linda Weiner, and this has been Women in Theater.